You're behaving less like a wife and more like a nosy mother-in-law. My decision is to move in with my mother. My spouse responded shockingly. If you're not okay with it, we should just get divorced. By that, what did he mean? Was he expecting me to take care of the whole house while I was giving birth at my parents' house? And what exactly does it mean to live with his mother? Shouldn't I be able to concentrate on other things if his mom helps with the child care? Where has the devoted spouse I knew disappeared to? Anger, grief, and suddenly despair overcame me. My brother's response to the tale appeared to confirm my lack of belief. My brother explained his strategy for finding the truth, saying, Just try what I suggest tomorrow. I'm Evelina, 32 years old, and going to become a mother for the first time. Given that the deadline is drawing near, I intend to visit my parents' home one more time tomorrow. My husband worriedly told me, No, don't lift heavy things in your condition, as he packed my bags. He was really trustworthy and polite. Before I departed, I urged him to keep the house neat, even when I'm not around. My meticulous housekeeping practices kept our just-built new home immaculate. He nuzzled my belly and said, I'll keep it clean and wait for you to return. It was a beautiful moment, but it was all destroyed by a phone call not long after. My mood fell as I saw my mother-in-law's name on the screen. Hello, Evelina. I became irritated by her piercing tone. Aren't you giving birth in your hometown again? It's inappropriate, as I warned you. Her constant calling had already worn me out. She was critical of me all the time, even though she seemed to be acting pleasant. Are you just kicking back at your house? Nice, must be. She scoffed. You seem to be putting on too much weight. Are you not eating enough? You're overweight already. She told me I'd be great if I just followed her advice and frequently boasted about her own parenting. I breastfed and used cloth diapers to raise my baby in the best possible way. You're only getting pampered. She scoffed. Her comparison of me to my husband's ex-girlfriend made the situation worse. She was a good girl, intelligent and trustworthy. Why do you make things so difficult? I was so frustrated that I couldn't even think. My calls to my spouse to step in had been made several times, but they never stopped. He didn't appear eager to confront her. Evelina, are you even listening? Once more her voice pierced my mind. Avoid returning to your hometown. How are you going to leave my little Lucas alone? I exhaled. It is absurd to refer to a grown guy as your baby. I can return right away if necessary. We're not that far apart. She angrily said, It's not about the distance. Whose child are you even having? My mother-in-law made another out-of-date comment, but I knew that confronting her would only exacerbate the situation. My spouse picked up the phone at that moment. Did I not tell you, Mom? I have a crucial work trip coming up before the baby's due date. Evelina feels more secure being at her parents' house. She complained. We did not discuss this. With an I can't take care of her mom, my spouse continued. She answered right away, saying, Neither can I. Evelina can't handle cleaning, and I have the dogs and cats to take care of. Her dogs weren't quite sanitary, and her home was always disorganized. Not only that, but even my midwife had warned against my staying there, and I felt I was allergic to cats. My husband said, Mom, is it okay if something happens to your grandchild? She eventually seemed to relax after that, but the anxiety persisted. It probably wasn't that my mother-in-law had any ill intentions. I could understand that, as someone with experience raising children, she was just enthusiastic. This was her first grandchild after all, and her excitement made sense. However, with me being heavily pregnant, I simply couldn't manage her overbearing energy. Despite her enthusiasm, 
It was too much for me to handle at the time. I was truly grateful that my husband stepped in to defend me when I couldn't. His reassurance comforted me. Don't worry, it's all going to be okay, he said. Encouraged by his support, I stuck to my plan and returned to my parents' home as scheduled. The arrangement was that I would stay at my parents' house until after the baby's one-month checkup, provided there were no complications. In addition to my parents, my brother and his family also lived on the same property, which was a relief. My brother had three kids, with the youngest just recently born. My sister-in-law was experienced in raising children, so I knew I could count on her support as I prepared for childbirth. Even though I felt lonely with my husband away on his business trip, I found comfort in having my mother around. She was great at cooking, and her nurturing presence was a huge help. Plus, my sister-in-law's child care expertise gave me confidence that I'd be in good hands. The peaceful days at my parents' house passed quickly. Then, the day before my due date, labor began. Thankfully, I gave birth safely and without complications though it was bittersweet that my husband wasn't able to be there. He was still away on his business trip. It was disappointing that he couldn't witness the birth, but I made sure to send him an email with photos of our newborn to share the joy. After all, no one can predict exactly when labor will begin, so I couldn't blame him for missing it. Although I wasn't fully recovered postpartum, I threw myself into caring for our baby. As a first-time mother, it was challenging. The baby cried day and night, and carrying them for so long left my shoulders aching. Every day was a whirlwind of breastfeeding, changing diapers, and trying to calm the baby down. The pain from childbirth still lingered, and I wasn't able to sleep much. Fatigue had set in quickly, as my body's healing process was slower than expected. However, all the exhaustion and physical discomfort seemed minor, compared to the joy of holding my child. Even when they were crying, I felt overwhelmed with love for this little life I had brought into the world. Their vitality filled me with pride, and I could gaze at them for hours. I was especially thankful that the hospital had banned visitors due to concerns about infections. If my mother-in-law had been allowed to visit, I don't think I would have had the mental or emotional energy to handle her presence while recovering. As much as I tried to stay strong physically, her added stress might have been too much. Before I knew it, the day of my discharge arrived. My husband was supposed to pick me up from the hospital, but at the last minute, he called to say that a work emergency had come up. My brother came to get me instead. I understood that work was important, but I had really wanted my husband to be there. I was eager to see him meet our child for the first time. I knew how excited he had been about the baby, and I imagined the joy on his face when he finally saw them. However, three days passed, then a week, and still, my husband hadn't come to visit. It felt strange. Our child had been born, and I thought he would have rushed over to see us. My parents and my brother's family started to get concerned, too. Even though I knew his job kept him busy, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. He had been preoccupied with work even before the baby was born, but I expected him to make time for us now. After all, this was a huge moment in our lives. As the days went by without a word from him, my unease grew. I messaged him, asking him to call when he had some free time, but there was no reply. My anxiety began to mount. I tried calling him, thinking he'd be done with work, but my calls went unanswered. Why wasn't he picking up? What was going on? Finally, my phone rang, but it was almost midnight. When I answered, my husband's voice sounded nonchalant. Oh, you're awake, huh? I thought you'd be asleep. His words struck me as odd. Does anyone normally call someone expecting they might be asleep? More importantly, I was just relieved to finally hear from him after days of silence. I was up feeding the baby, I replied, trying to keep the conversation light. Are you really that busy? 
I hoped for some reassurance, but his response was casual, almost dismissive. Yeah, a bit, he said, sounding like his usual self, as if he didn't sense the worry or urgency in my voice. Come soon and see the baby, I said, pressing on. We also need to register the birth. There was a brief pause. Can anyone else do that? He asked, sounding surprised. His words left me stunned for a moment. Despite it being late, I couldn't help raising my voice. What? You don't think that's important? I asked, incredulous. Sorry, I'm just really busy right now. He responded, his tone flat and indifferent. Before I could say anything else, the baby, who had just been fed, started crying again. I sighed and prepared to change the diaper. The name we chose is fine. No changes, he continued, his words feeling disconnected from the moment. I saw the baby's face in the email, so please go ahead and submit the documents. Wait, I tried to interject, but he cut me off. I have to get up early tomorrow, so I'm going to hang up now. And just like that, the call ended. I sat there, stunned, the phone still in my hand. For a moment, my mind went blank, unable to process what had just happened. Slowly, sadness welled up inside me. How could he be so dismissive? No matter how busy he was, being treated so impersonally hurt deeply. I knew that postpartum emotions could be unpredictable, but this felt like more than just hormones. His words, his tone. It was as if he didn't care, and it left me feeling more alone than ever. I sighed deeply, trying to hold back the tears. Maybe this was the reality now. My beautiful baby was right in front of me, filling my days with joy. But for my husband, it seemed as though nothing had changed. Maybe becoming a parent overnight was too much for him. I tried to be understanding, hoping that once he saw our baby's face in person, his attitude would change. I even considered returning home earlier than planned to support him, thinking that seeing our child might help him connect. But when I brought up the idea, both my mother and sister-in-law urged me not to push myself. They reminded me that I was still recovering and needed time to regain my strength. Despite their advice, I couldn't shake the bad feeling growing inside me. My husband's indifferent attitude was deeply troubling, and to make matters worse, even the relentless phone calls from my mother-in-law had suddenly stopped. I sent a few emails to my husband, hoping to get some sort of response, but there was nothing. It wasn't that I was waiting for my mother-in-law to reach out, but her silence added to my growing anxiety. What was going on? Was something happening that I didn't know about? While these thoughts swirled in my mind, the days slipped by, consumed by the routine of caring for my newborn. Before I knew it, two weeks had passed. Since my husband hadn't been able to take care of it, my brother ended up registering the birth of my child. I was grateful that my parents were around to help, especially during the day, so I could finally catch up on some much-needed sleep. Slowly but surely, my strength was returning, and I started feeling more like myself again. Then, out of the blue, I got a call from Lucas. Hello, Lucas, I answered, my voice filled with hope, eager to finally hear his voice and maybe even get some good news. But something was off. His tone was serious. Too serious. I have something to tell you, he said. His words sent a chill down my spine. Is something wrong? I asked, suddenly alert. My earlier cheerfulness evaporated in an instant. Can you come back home right now? His voice was insistent, almost urgent. Right now? What's going on? I asked, confused. It was late. The baby had just fallen asleep and I was still in my pajamas. The request felt abrupt and out of place. Just come home, he repeated. Right now. There was something in his voice, an edge I hadn't heard before, that told me this wasn't just an ordinary request. What's happening? 
Is there a problem? I asked, my heart beginning to race. But he didn't answer my questions directly. All he said was, Just come home now. Something was wrong. Terribly wrong. Whatever it was, it had to be serious for him to sound like that. I could feel the knot of anxiety tightening in my chest as I tried to figure out what could possibly have happened. I left my baby with my mother, who could barely conceal her worry, and hurried out to the car still wearing my pajamas. A sense of dread filled me as I drove. What could have happened that was so urgent? I repeated to myself, Drive safely. Don't rush. Trying to keep calm. But every red light felt like an eternity, and my anxiety grew with each passing second. About ten minutes later, I pulled up to the house. My heart was pounding as I got out of the car, clutching my phone tightly. Bracing myself for the worst, I stepped inside. To my shock, I found Lucas and my mother-in-law sitting in the living room, casually drinking tea as if nothing was wrong. I froze, standing in the doorway, utterly confused. This was not the scene I had envisioned. I had imagined something dire, but what I walked into felt surreal. As I stood there, trying to make sense of the situation, I noticed something unsettling. The small plant that usually sat on the shelf, the stuffed animals that decorated the cushions, and even the clock that hung on the wall. Everything was gone. What's going on here? I asked, my voice shaky with confusion. Oh, I got rid of them. They weren't to my taste, my mother-in-law said dismissively, without a hint of remorse. These were things I had cherished, small pieces of my life that held sentimental value. Now, they are gone, just like that. And I'm using the room at the back on the second floor, she added as if it were the most natural thing in the world. I couldn't understand what she meant. My heart raced as I looked to Lucas for some kind of explanation, but his face was cold, more distant than I had ever seen it. Lucas, why did you call me back so urgently? What's going on? I pleaded, my voice cracking under the pressure of the moment. Lucas remained silent. It was my mother-in-law who answered instead. I can't tolerate this anymore she declared. How long do you plan to stay away from home? You're a wife, so you should be doing your duties around the house. Come back quickly and make dinner. Her words hit me like a ton of bricks. I was speechless. I had planned to stay at my parents' house until the baby's one-month checkup, and suddenly I was being summoned home to prepare dinner. What's with that attitude? She continued, her voice growing sharper. You're a wife, not some glaring mother-in-law. Desperate, I turned to Lucas again, trying to find some sanity in the madness. Lucas, what is this all about? I asked, my voice trembling. Lucas finally spoke, but his response was as cold as his expression. I've decided to live with my mother. If you don't like it, let's get a divorce. The words hung in the air, heavy and final. Divorce? My mind reeled. What had I done wrong? I couldn't make sense of what was happening. Tears filled my eyes as I begged for an explanation, but none came. Seeing my tears, Lucas and his mother exchanged amused glances and laughed. It was cruel, like I was some kind of joke to them. Are we going to live together or not? I asked, my voice breaking under the weight of my confusion and despair. At that moment, I heard the sound of paws on the stairs. Two dogs and two cats suddenly appeared, running down from the second floor. I sneezed, caught off guard. What's this? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Yes, these pets are coming with me too, my mother-in-law said with a satisfied smile. They're my precious family. I stared at her, bewildered. But haven't I told you that I might be allergic to cats? Her response was dismissive. What are you talking about? You haven't been diagnosed with anything, have you? It might just be in your head. I instinctively covered my face with a handkerchief, but it was too late. 
My eyes and nose were already starting to itch. I glanced around the house again and noticed something I hadn't seen before. Scratches on the wallpaper and the pillars. The pets had been clawing at them, and our brand new home was already being damaged. How could Lucas, who knew about my potential allergy, suggest living with untrained pets and a newborn? It didn't make sense. Why are we starting to live together now? I can't accept this, I said, my voice shaking with disbelief. If you let mom help with child care, you can focus on the housework, Lucas said, his tone devoid of empathy. Don't make decisions for me, I shot back, my frustration bubbling to the surface. And why did you throw away my things without asking? They were in poor taste, my mother-in-law replied casually. The irony of her statement struck me considering she was the one who went shopping for an old jersey her son used to wear. Lucas's voice cut through the air, as cold as ever. Just make dinner quickly. For a moment, I didn't recognize the man standing in front of me. Was this really my husband? The despair I felt went beyond sadness or anger. It was a hollow, empty feeling, knowing that he didn't even ask how our child was doing. It was as if the baby didn't even matter. Suddenly, I remembered my child's face. The thought of my innocent baby brought me back to reality, and I felt a surge of clarity. I didn't need this. I didn't need a husband like this or a father like this for my child. Talking was useless. I want a divorce, I declared, my voice steady. The tears that flowed down my face weren't from sadness anymore. They were from my cat allergy. Without another word, I hurried back to my parents' house. The moment I saw my baby's peaceful, sleeping face, the floodgates opened, and I cried uncontrollably. This was the only thing that mattered now. My child. My future. Without them. Seeing the tears streaming down my face, my brother grew visibly concerned. What's going on? He asked, his voice filled with worry. I recounted everything, how I had been forced into a situation where living together with my mother-in-law seemed inevitable, how the house that once felt like mine had been completely altered, and how, despite the absence of the cats, I still couldn't stop crying. My emotions were a tangled mess, and everything felt off. Isn't that strange? My brother mused, tilting his head slightly in thought. All of this, happening so suddenly. I wonder if something else is going on, he muttered, more to himself than to me. His suspicion piqued my curiosity, but I felt helpless. Are we just going to leave it like this? He asked, his expression turning serious. I hate it, I admitted, frustration bubbling up inside me but I don't know what to do. You hate it, right? My brother pressed. Of course I'm angry, confused, and frustrated, I exclaimed. He paused for a moment, then leaned in, his tone more deliberate. Listen, will you try something? Do what I say for the next few days. His words sparked a glimmer of hope within me. The following day, wearing an apron and a mask, I returned to the house where my husband and mother-in-law were. As I stepped inside, it became clear that the floors hadn't been cleaned in days, perhaps weeks, and were covered in pet hair. Laundry and trash were scattered everywhere, making the place look like a health hazard. The state of the house was appalling, but without a single word of complaint, I quietly got to work, scrubbing and cleaning every room with precision and care. My mother-in-law watched from a distance, a smug expression on her face. It seems like you finally understood your duties as a wife, she remarked, her voice dripping with condescension. Now bring the grandchild over quickly. Yes, I replied, keeping my tone neutral. I'll bring the baby once I've finished cleaning. When will you be done, she demanded. By tomorrow, I answered. That's too late. Hurry up, she snapped. 
Sorry, I said, feigning submission. I'll make sure everything is spotless so you and the pets can be comfortable. That's only natural, she said, completely oblivious to the sarcasm I hid behind my words. As she continued to boss me around, I smirked to myself. Let her think she's one, I thought. She has no idea what's coming. I'll be back tomorrow, I promised before leaving the house. Back at my parents' home, I held my child close, feeling a surge of love and protection. My mother-in-law had been relentless in her demands to see the baby, but there was no way I'd let her hold my child. I was at my breaking point. That evening, my brother, who had been waiting patiently, played a video on his phone. It was footage recorded earlier that day by a small camera I had discreetly placed in the house while cleaning. The screen showed a conversation between my mother-in-law and my husband. My blood ran cold as I listened to their words. Once the cleaning is done and the house is tidy, we'll get her to leave, my mother-in-law was saying. A little pressure and she'll fold. Hurry up, she's waiting for me. See, that's why I always said you were better off with your ex-girlfriend, Lucas responded, his tone casual, as if discussing the weather. I really should have listened to you, Mom. That daughter-in-law of mine is stubborn, unfriendly, and allergic to cats. I only appreciate her for giving me a grandchild, my mother-in-law continued, her words cutting deep. My girlfriend and I don't want kids anyway, so it's fine. I'll raise the grandchild and have them take care of me in the future. The audacity of their conversation sent a wave of fury through me. My stomach churned with disgust. How could they talk about me like that? How could they treat me and our childlike disposable pieces in their twisted game? These cameras are really amazing, my brother said, seemingly impressed by the quality of the footage but I was far too consumed with rage to share in his appreciation. I was sick to my stomach. It was as I had suspected all along. They had never intended to live together with me. From the start, they had been plotting to take over the house, seize control of my child, and push me out of the picture entirely. Lucas was planning to rekindle his relationship with his ex-girlfriend, while his mother would take on the role of raising my child as her own. The betrayal was beyond anything I could have imagined. Leaving my child safely in our mother's care, my brother and I swiftly returned to the house. This time, I was ready. Watch out, Lucas, I thought as we walked through the door. I cannot forgive the things you've done, nor your pathetic schemes. Seeing me enter, Lucas and his mother looked surprised. Did you come back to continue cleaning? My mother-in-law asked, her voice dripping with arrogance. Yes, exactly, I replied, my voice steady but cold. This time, I've come to dispose of something. What are you talking about? Lucas asked, frowning in confusion. I looked him dead in the eyes. I've come to dispose of a big piece of trash. My brother stood beside me, his presence adding weight to my words. He's here to help. Don't make a fuss. The confusion on their faces deepened. What are you talking about? My mother-in-law demanded. I took a breath, my voice calm and deliberate. It's not me who is being driven out, I said slowly. It's you. Their expressions changed instantly, from confusion to panic. What are you talking about? My mother-in-law sputtered. I oppose your forced cohabitation plan, and I absolutely will not allow myself to be kicked out just so your ex-girlfriend can move in. I'll get a divorce, but there's no way I'm giving up my child. Why are you saying this? Lucas asked, visibly shaken. My brother stepped forward, his voice calm but firm. Everything was recorded on camera. We have the footage. Their faces paled. A camera! Don't joke around, my mother-in-law barked. How did you? I placed it yesterday while I was cleaning, I answered coolly. What? They both exclaimed in unison, their shock palpable. 
That's an invasion of privacy. Doing something like that without permission. It's a crime, they shouted, their anger boiling over. But I remained unfazed. The real crime is what the two of you have been plotting. I remained composed and, with a steady voice, explained. I installed the camera for your mother's sake. My mother-in-law blinked, confused. What do you mean, for my sake? Yes, I continued calmly. I thought it would be helpful for you to watch over your precious pets while you were away, but during a test run, I accidentally overheard your conversation. Both my mother-in-law and Lucas froze. My husband's face drained of color, panic spreading across his features. Hey, I said coldly, my voice sharp. I really want to hear this. While I was risking my life giving birth to our child, what were you doing? Uh, um. Lucas stammered, his eyes darting around, desperate for an excuse. I turned to my mother-in-law. Do you maybe know anything about this? After all, you liked his ex-girlfriend, didn't you? Was this your doing? Caught off guard, she tried to shift the blame. It's not my fault. I just came over to make dinner for my son, who had returned from a business trip. And there she was. It was you who suggested the three of us live together in this house, wasn't it? She looked at Lucas for help. I was only hiding your affair to make things easier for you. The two of them fumbled for excuses, their lies unraveling by the second. Why did you bring the ex-girlfriend home? I asked, my voice cold. Was the business trip a lie? No, it wasn't a lie, Lucas insisted. I just happened to run into her while I was on the trip and we went out for drinks and, well, one thing led to another. One thing led to another? My disgust was palpable. Lucas flustered. It wasn't intentional. She just started saying how pitiful I was being neglected by you. Neglected? I interrupted, incredulous. Who has been neglecting whom? You've been ignoring me, he shot back, his tone defensive. You always use the pregnancy as an excuse to avoid going out or eating together. My feelings have been completely ignored. What are you even talking about? I snapped. You agreed that it was okay, that I needed rest during the pregnancy. I never agreed. Lucas's behavior turned defensive even childish. I've been enduring it, waiting for you to finally treat me like I matter. I've always been kind, but you've never appreciated me. His words were so absurd, so self-centered, that I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of disappointment. Was this really my husband, the father of my child? How could someone be so petty and selfish, comparing himself to our unborn child? when I had been the one struggling through pregnancy and birth. His lack of empathy was incomprehensible. Then my ex said, Whenever you're tired of being a dad, I'm here to comfort you. He added with a shrug. She's been comforting me while you were away at your parents' house. Comforting you? I repeated, my voice laced with disbelief. What do you mean being a dad? You haven't even started yet. Unable to bear the stupidity any longer, I reached for my smartphone and called the one person who could clarify the truth, the ex-girlfriend herself. My brother had tracked her down through social media earlier, and we'd already had a brief conversation about the situation. To my surprise, she had given us her contact information without hesitation. Hello. I greeted her when she picked up. I apologize for calling again, but it seems my husband is still misunderstanding the facts. Could you please reiterate what you confirmed earlier? I set my phone to speaker mode, turning the volume up so everyone could hear clearly. Lucas looked at me, wide-eyed, as his ex's voice filled the room. I didn't do anything, she began, sounding slightly irritated. He invited me over saying he had something to give me. All I did was listen to him complain about his wife. Then his mother showed up, 
and the two of them got carried away with their conversation. It was honestly just a nuisance for me. I left as soon as I could. I glanced at my husband and mother-in-law. Their faces were pale, the panic evident. I'm really not fond of his mother, she continued. And by the way, I'm married with children now, so I have no interest in getting involved. I just wanted to be clear. The silence that followed was thick with tension. My husband's face turned ghostly white. She... she dislikes me? He muttered, more to himself than to anyone else. I must have been drunk, he added quickly, grasping at straws. I didn't know she was married. Is one of you lying? I asked my voice like ice. Lucas cornered, gave a weak smile. It's her, he said desperately, pointing fingers. She's lying. She just ran away because things got awkward. I'm the victim here, really. You'll forgive me, right? Can we move past this? Forgive you, I repeated, staring at him, incredulous. You have no idea what forgiveness even means. Lucas continued to avoid eye contact, his lies unraveling in real time. He was exposed, but I felt nothing for him anymore. No sadness, no pity, just the cold, hard realization that he wasn't the man I thought he was. He reached for it violently, and I drew my hand away, my contempt growing. Don't touch me with those filthy hands. I lost my temper. Calmly, he continued. I know you're upset right now, but you'll be able to forgive me eventually. I wounded you because I was tricked by loneliness, controlled by my mother, and manipulated by my ex. However, we may begin anew. Start fresh? I sneered. Are you still intoxicated? At last I've witnessed your true nature. Thankfully I discovered this before you had a chance to hug our kid. What? I'm unable to hold my kid. Obviously not. Additionally, your mother won't. That is incorrect. I'm worthy of holding my grandchild. Hey, I'd like to restart. If I meet our child, I can reconsider. His remarks seemed hollow, especially in light of what he had said about not needing children on the pet camera. I was not moved by his pleas at all. You're the one who wanted a divorce, right? I inquired. I can't raise a child with someone who is not mature enough to know what's important. You're going to take a father away from his child. Don't act like a dad right now. The youngster will do better without you around. Go make a fresh start with your mother and bask in all the attention you receive. Lucas lowered his shoulders in surrender as I spoke quietly. Then, with a gloating look, his mother interrupted. You think you're so smart, but if you record us without our consent, I'll sue you, and I'll file a lawsuit against you for stealing my grandson and treating me like an elder. Her outrageous accusations were perplexing, but my brother said coolly and collected, That case isn't going to succeed. It would be prudent of you to give it up. How much do you know? It would be silly to give up. If I sue, I can win, she shot back. Silently, my brother gave me his business card. My job is at a legal company. You won't win this lawsuit, I can assure you as an attorney. Your time and money would be wasted anyway. I continued while they stood there, speechless. It's true that giving up would be a loss. Additionally, we'll apply for a property division. The cats meowed as they woke up from their snooze at that same time. Before my allergies act up, it's time for us to go. I ignored their objections and returned to my parents' house, where my cherished kid was waiting for me. The divorce was eventually completed. I requested a one-time payment in full for both child support and property division. My spouse objected, saying it was unfair to both of us and our child. But who was the real victim here? My spouse had deceived me, and our child was left with a father who was unsuitable for the position. Even stronger criticism came from his mother. Isn't it important what happens to an old lady and her four pets? That a grandchild would be reared by a mother as awful as this is unfortunate. 
I brushed off her taunts. Please don't bring the pets into this. She had wanted to utilize my child for her care, so I was happy to be free of her control. I desired a free upbringing for my child. They said they wanted to stay in the new house we had constructed, but I didn't want to continue living somewhere where my personal boundaries had been crossed. I thus chose to sell it. The funds were paid to me in one single amount, and it felt free to start again. My ex-husband must be happy, because this is what he wanted. My brother guided us to a solution by handling the matter with ability. Without his help, I could not have succeeded. I apologize to him for including him in this. It's only natural for me to protect my sister, he stated. But when you meet a good man, make sure to introduce him to me first. I had no time to think about dating because I was too busy taking care of my child right now. But in spite of myself, I ran into a middle school classmate at a hospital allergy test and we ended up exchanging contact details. He was a busy nurse, so our correspondence was sporadic emails. I was dismayed when the test later revealed that I am allergic to cats because I adore them. We eventually started dating after exchanging teasing letters for a few years and promising to go out to dinner once everything was sorted out. After a few more years, we tied the knot. I took the time to make sure my brother was the best person to raise my child. Together, we are currently creating a lovely life.